dead. All persons having any business before this honourable court, now draw nigh. Give your attendance and you shall be heard. God save the Queen. Please be seated. Admission of lawyers, Rebecca Atkinson. Let Rebecca Atkinson be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Charvind Baines. May it please the court, I move that my niece, Charvind Baines, be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Charvind Baines be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Gilmore Tepfamane Chimbatete. May it please the court, I move that Gilmore Tepfamane Chimbatete Admitted as a lawyer. But Gilmore Tapanani Chimbatete be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Raina Dea. May it please the court, I move that Raina Dio be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. But Raina Dio be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Hauchi Her. May it please the court, I move that Hauchi Her be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. But how she her be admitted as a lawyer of this court? Hong Yi He. Let Hong Yi her be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Tatiana Elichich. May it please the court, I move that Tatiana Elichich be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Tatiana Elichich be admitted as a lawyer of this court. May it please the court, I move that Shi Yijin, daughter of one of my good friends, be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. But Shi Yijin be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Arti Kisti. May it please the court, I move that Arti Kisti be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. But Arti Kisti be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Admi Kicic. May it please the court, I move that Admir Kicic be admitted as a lawyer of this, on, excuse me, of this honourable court. That Admir Kicic be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Ashley Erin Leonard. May it please the court, I move that my best friend Ashley Erin Leonard be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. That Ashley Erin Leonard be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Hayley Collett Little. May it please the court, I move that Haley Collette Little be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. That Haley Collette Little be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Jessica Ann Matter. May it please the court, I move that Jessica Ann Matter be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. That Jessica Ann Matter be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Tui Lin Kao Nguyen. May it please the court, I move that Tui Lin Kao Nguyen be admitted as a lawyer to this honourable court. That Tui Lin Kao Nguyen be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Sean Stanley Ott. May it please the court, I move that Sean Stanley Ott be admitted as lawyer of this honourable court. That Sean Stanley Ott be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Charu Singh. May it please the court, I move that Charu Singh be admitted as a lawyer. Honourable court. Acharya Singh be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Andrea Askru Baturis. May it please the court, I move that my niece, Andrea Askru Baturis, be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Andrea Askru Baturis be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Esther Renala Rishani Wirasuria. Let Esther Renata Mishani Wurisiri be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Caitlin Lydia Whalen. May it please the court, I move that Caitlin Lydia Whalen be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Caitlin Lydia Whalen be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Annabelle Victoria Jean Wilford. May it 
please the court. I move that my sister Annabelle Victoria Jean Wilford be admitted as the lawyer of this honourable court. That Annabelle Victoria Jean Wilford be admitted as the lawyer of this court. May it please the court, I move that Dahlia Haidari be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. That Dahlia Haidari be admitted as a lawyer of this court. It will be necessary for the purpose of swearing an oath or making an affirmation that all those being admitted this afternoon stand up but remain in their current places. Could all admittees please stand? Rebecca Atkinson. Sharvind Baines, Gilmore Tapfamane Chimbatete, Raina Deo, Hao Chi He, Hong Yi He, Tadiana Ilicic, Shu Yi Jin, Arti Kisti, Admir Kicic, Ashley Erin Leonard, Haley Collett Little, Jessica Ann Matta, Tui Lin Kao Nguyen, Sean Stanley Ott, Charu Singh, Andrea Askarivaturis, Esther Renala Mashani Wirasuria, Caitlin Lydia Whalen, Annabelle Victoria Jean Wilford, Dahlia Haydari. Do you severally swear or declare and affirm? that you will truly and honestly conduct yourselves in the practice of a lawyer of the Supreme Court of New South Wales and that you will faithfully serve as such in the administration of the laws and usages of this state according to the best of your knowledge, skill and ability. Would you please say, so help me God, or I do. Help me God, I do. Would you please resume your seats. Now that the formal part of the proceedings has ended, I'd like to warmly welcome you to the Supreme Court of New South Wales. Present with me on the bench today to my right is Justice Stevenson and to my left, Justice, Justice Williams. Each of their honours are members of the equity division of the court. Together, we, con we constitute the court that has, in the exercise of its jurisdiction, admitted you to practice. As we gather here today, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. We recognise the long-standing and enduring customs and traditions of Australia's First Nations and acknowledge with deep regret the role our legal system has had in perpetrating many injustices against Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. To all the new lawyers here today, welcome to the legal profession. Today is a day for celebration. You've all worked extremely hard to get here through caffeine fueled nights and obscure problem questions, reading countless wafer thin pages of textbook and more cases than you can possibly hope to remember. Rest assured for those with, of you with a bibliophobia, that is a fear of running out of reading material, as lawyers, that fear will never materialise. You have entered the world of eggshell skulls encountered a mysterious reasonable person and have understood that the Constitution means a lot more than just the vibe of the thing. In becoming a lawyer, you have today joined a centuries-old profession with ancient origins. The custom of advocates swearing an admissions oath dates back to the 12th century. This court first admitted lawyers to practice in 1824 and by 1830 the names of lawyers were entered onto roles in this state. You have now become part of this tradition almost 200 years later. Perhaps, for some of you, or for your family and friends, that's how long it feels like you've been studying. On that note, I'm also pleased to welcome those with you today and watching on the live stream. For many of you, the support of your family and friends has no doubt proved invaluable. No doubt, they've also often been on the receiving end of your finely polished skills of argument and persuasion. I do take, hope you take the time to thank them today. The oath or affirmation you have made today is a serious one and deserves solemn regard. Whether you work in private practice, at the bar, in a community legal centre or an entirely different field, you should be known for your honesty, your integrity and your commitment to justice. It is an acknowledgement of, these weighty form, of this weighty reform 
responsibility that we observe today's unique formalities, including the moving of lawyers, swearing of oaths, and even our somewhat strange choice of fashion. I recall on one occasion some years ago, a young member of the audience asked if we were doing Santa photos after the ceremony. I was, I was very sorry to disappoint. However, although we mark this occasion with formality and tradition, not everything in the legal profession remains unchanging. You'll be unsurprised to hear that last year we had to adapt quite a bit. COVID-19 meant a rapid shift to increase the use of virtual courtroom setups and technology to ensure access to justice continued in the midst of a pandemic and closer to home to ensure that new lawyers continued to get, got, get admitted to the profession. Things didn't always go smoothly, as those with me on the bench could probably attest to. There have been real difficulties to grapple with in terms of open justice, effective communication and fairness to participants. And occasionally a lawyer might even get stuck behind a Zoom kitten filter. But for all the challenges we faced, the impetus is greater than ever before for us to prioritise flexibility and accessibility. Better use of technology and increased working from home arrangements have profound implications for how our legal systems interact with many people, including those in rural and remote areas, those with a disability, medical conditions or carers' responsibilities. As the newest members of the profession, you are at the forefront of innovation in the law and of a unique opportunity to see through changes so that justice is done openly and equitably. There are, of course, other changes that deserve attention. When we think of the diversity of the legal profession, we encounter the duality that we have come very far and that much still needs to be done. Though women were not originally permitted to practice, since 2018, women have made up, made up more than half of all solicitors with a practice certificate in New South Wales and currently make up 63% of solicitors under the age of 30. Women occupy many of the most senior positions in the law, including, of course, the Chief Justice of Australia. However, women continue to face challenges of representation, including amongst judges of this court, and, for example, amongst barristers in speaking roles in the High Court of Australia. It's heartening to see that the local court of New South Wales has almost achieved gender parity amongst magistrates, but we must not be complacent about these issues. There are other notable, noticeable diversity concerns that we must face head on. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and people from diverse cultural backgrounds continue to be alarmingly underrepresented in the legal profession, and particularly within the judiciary and the ranks of senior counsel. We must also be alert to barriers to the profession from people from less privileged backgrounds. Law should not be a profession for the wealthy, and the idea that students may be dissuaded from studying law by the cost of a law degree, which this year has again increased, or because of other systemic issues is troubling. Not just this, but we'll only achieve a truly diverse profession when barriers to advancement are broken down and people from different backgrounds are properly, properly supported in a collegiate and inclusive environment, free from harassment and discrimination. These issues are fundamental to a just and transparent legal system and to the legitimacy of the rule of law. We need diverse representation amongst advocates and judges so that all people who become involved in our justice system can be properly heard and fairly engaged with by a system reflective of our broader community. Despite these challenges, there is real scope for change. There is far greater diversity of background amongst junior lawyers than those who have been around as long as me. And you have, only have to look at your fellow, fellow admittees in the courtroom and then at the paintings on the wall to see that this is undoubtedly so. You are in a unique position as new lawyers who are entering the profession at a time when, more than ever, your words and actions are having an impact for good. You are being heard and taken seriously when you agitate, agitate to correct injustices, whether it be speaking out about unsustainable working cultures, sexual harassment or bullying within the profession, unfair laws or systemic failings affecting our society's most vulnerable. I urge you to continue to speak up to these things. They do matter. You are the future of the profession and will steer the direction it will take. 
As a lawyer, you will also need to make difficult ethical decisions at times. With regard to our personal characteristics, lawyers have been the butt of jokes for centuries. Some would say there are, of course, only a handful of lawyer jokes. The rest are true stories. Jokes aside, you must use the tools you have developed to think critically and not compromise on your fundamental duties to the court and the administration of justice, as well as the other ethical duties you must uphold. Now that you are lawyers, you can get paid to argue instead of just arguing for free. Of course, there is a lot more to it than that. You're an advisor, a problem solver, a mediator, and an advocate for the marginalised. As you go about your day-to-day -day work, remember that you're not deal merely dealing with the law in a vacuum, but law as it, as it applies to people's lives. For this reason, you must strive to deliver legal services competently and fearlessly, with courtesy and integrity. Justice Gagler, before he was a High Court judge, once said, you must be prepared to give the same answer to the same question for the same reasons, no matter who asked the question or for what purpose or in what context the asking may occur. That is foundational to upholding the rule of law. For those of you who will practice law, the way you communicate information to others will have profound consequences for access to justice. For a non-lawyer, law is often incomprehensible. One of your roles as a lawyer will be to make law accessible to others, sometimes by deciphering legal complexities, other times by deciphering poor legal drafting, and sometimes both. One thing you will regrettably strike throughout your career is legislation, which seems carefully and deliberately crafted with the object of ensuring no one can understand it, including the unfortunate judges who have to rule on it. Your task is not just to understand it, but to explain it clearly to those whose rights and interests are affected by it. As lawyers, we must not keep the law locked up as something knowable to us, only to us. A client reading your advice should be empowered to understand your meaning, not mystified and confused. So be clear and concise in your writing and your speaking. Plain English is powerful. Consider, do I really need to say aforementioned or herewith? Must I drop in that Latin phrase to show how clever I am? Should I really use double negatives, tautologies, and wordy clauses that take up a whole page? I suggest the answer to these questions is obviously no. The best advocates can make their point simply and succinctly. Now, I regret to say that some of the most experienced lawyers and judges from time to time could use that reminder, but don't pick up their bad habits. I also want to speak about failure. I would not be surprised if there are quite a few over overachievers and perfectionists in the room today. Even so, at various points of your career, you will make mistakes, some minor, some perhaps more serious. When you do make mistakes, your commitment to honesty, integrity and the administration of justice means that you must take responsibility, correct what you can and learn from those errors. You must fail, you must fail at times in order to grow. What is important is that you try not to make the same mistake twice. I, I've made, I myself have made, made, made many mistakes over the year, far, too more, far more than I care to remember. Even as Chief Justice, my decisions have on occasions been successfully appealed to the High Court. When that happens, I'm obliged through gritted teeth to remind myself that it's not just a rumour that the High Court is infallible, but even, in fact, at times, even dissenting High Court judgments become the law. Finally, I want to emphasise that your mental health is extremely important. Now, this may sound unexpected at this type of ceremony, but the law is not everything. There may be times when you feel overwhelmed, burnt out or distressed. If you do, you should not be afraid to seek professional help or take a step back when you need to. Also remember, the law is a collegiate profession and in times of difficulty, the support of your peers will prove invaluable. I found that throughout my career. Although you might find it hard to believe, I was admitted quite a long time ago. I lost my first case and I lost many more after that. But throughout my 35 years in practice as a barrister, I could always count on the other barristers on my floor to share my disappointment at the unfairness of the verdict, the slight tactics of opposing counsel, and most often, I regret to say, the obtuseness 
of the judge or judges before whom I was appearing. Now, I hasten to add, I don't include either of my fellow judges on the bench in that comment. On behalf of all the judges of the Supreme Court, and particularly those sitting with me today, I once again congratulate you on your admission and welcome you to the legal profession. The court will now adjourn. <laughs>